All right, boys and girls, what it is? Chris Avance, Wi-Fi Training, and I am here about to fire up ICE 3.0, just released from a shop, the press. Let's see what's new. We're going to start from the ESXi setup page because I know a lot of you guys like to build labs, lab things out. It's also good to see the back end. Yeah, I'm still using the old uh, vSphere client, so what? We're going to go ahead and click play on this guy. I just deployed the OVA, the 300 gig small version. Uh, this is going to be part of the new Cisco ICE lessons course that I'm writing right now. And wouldn't you know it, I was halfway through recording the course whenever ICE 3.0 came out. So instead of just focusing on 2.7 patch 2, we're now going to make sure we include ICE 3.0 as well. So we're current with the latest, greatest, all that fun, <laughs> all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and do the setup script that is normal for ICE Prime and any of these using the application developer engine, that middleware interface that allows us to deploy a Red Hat basically kernel and then install the application scripts on top of it. So once we run the setup script, our window should get a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to have to expand this just so we can see it. There we go. So enter the host name. Uh, whoops, it's not going to be that. We're going to do ice uh, 3 and we're going to do its IP address as 10.1.10.20 in our topology anyway. So class C mask, we're going to do a 10.1.10.1 as its gateway. We're not going to configure IPv6 yet. Uh, you can use IPv6 with ice, of course, it is supported. Default domain name in our environment is Wi-Fi training local. And if you make a mistake here, guys, remember control C aborts, you start over. Okay. Uh, name server 10.1.10.15 is our name server. We're not going to add a secondary uh, NTP server is the same. Uh, we're not going to add a secondary there either. Time zone is America, Chicago. Enable SSH. I want SSH enabled on my node here. It's for the lab. Uh, we're going to put in the name admin. Guys, back in the day, the script was broke. So if you just hit enter right there, you couldn't log in because even though it says use admin, it just wasn't. Okay. Never really figured out why that was. Yeah, I think I did. It's been a while. I've known not to just use admin and to type it in. So we're going to put in our super secret password a couple times. And basically, once it does a ping of the gateway and it does a ping of like the NTP server, then it's going to go ahead and start its setup scripts and unpackage the app. So Cisco developed this application developer engine a while back, actually, whenever they started releasing ICE and Prime as a virtual appliance. The reason was is because if you go back far enough, Cisco ICE used to be an app that was installed on top of Windows servers, not ICE, but ACS, Cisco Secure Access Control Server. It was installed on top of Windows Server, and what ended up happening was, is even though Cisco specifically said, do not co-reside this with other applications because it needs its resources. What's the first thing a lot of administrators did? Installed other applications on the Windows Server, and Cisco Tech got tired of fielding calls about Windows and integrated apps that were never supposed to be there in the first place. So they came out with this new appliance model and the application developer engine, which resides above the operating system, which is a Red Hat core, above the operating system and below the application stack that's installed on it. So this gives users a familiar CLI style interface to set up a host name and IP address, gateway mask, and then basically do an initial application installation on top of it to where things like ICE and Prime and, and app like, apps like that basically have a simpler install like you see here. Now it's going to take a while for this to come up. And if you, for the guys out there who work on ICE and who worked on Prime and you've logged into this interface, if you've ever wondered why you have to type in the name ICE whenever you're on the ICE server, that's why. Because the ADE doesn't understand exactly what's installed. It's, you know, show application status ICE, right? It, the, the ADE is just the ADE. You have to specify what it is you're looking for on Prime, it's NCS, for example. So we passed our IO bandwidth, all that kind of stuff, and we were able to ping the gateway and everything works. So it's installing ICE as we speak. And then from this moment on, for 99.9% .9 of the things we're going to do, we're going to do it from the GUI. 
And there's a couple things like setting up repositories and some maintenance items that we can do from the console. I've enabled SSH access to that for my environment. Now, uh, we're gonna let this finish copying. I'll be right back with you. All right, so I finally came back up, uh, but the interface over here, I've got, I went to the IP address here on my machine and we get this new application server is still initializing. It's kind of nice though uh, to see like, hey man, this is, this is gonna be something new as far as the interface goes. We're still waiting to see that, but on the uh, console side, let's see if there's anything new. So we're gonna go to question. Remember, this is that ADE environment. So uh, it's, I'm not sure if there's anything new here or not, but we can try to go to configure. Uh, and actually, let's just do show application status. And then we need ice. There we go, that's what I was talking about earlier. And from here, it actually doesn't know what's installed. This is that ADE environment I was talking about. So, hopefully here pretty soon we'll see the status. We do see that the application server still has not started because we've got the web interface over there at the IP address and it's still waiting. So let's see if we can get just another refresh. Sometimes the browser can be a little fun, but let's go back here and check now. The application server is still initializing, so we're just gonna wait for that. As soon as it's up, we'll get going. One of the big things with ICE 3.0 is now they have a much more defined ICE API, so that's one thing. Uh, and there's a couple other things that they've come out with, some enhancements and all that. But yeah, here is the new interface, man. Looks very clean and nice. I am excited to start on this journey with you guys. And what perfect timing then to do this right whenever the new course comes out, right? Whenever we start the new ICE Lessons course. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and log in here. And yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with this new version. We're going to test it out. It's going to be like, uh, what's that movie where it's like, we'll put it to the test. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it to the test. Um, so I'm going to say next here. And then, of course, our licensing warning, that's fine. Love the new interface, though. Really white, really white. Uh, it, it does pop, for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, visibility setup. But I am noticing a few more widgets up here along the top. So, and the other thing is, we got endpoints, guests, vulnerability, and threats. The navigation has changed a lot, a lot. So if we look down here, I am not seeing what I would normally see from like the system summary. I see that ice node is there, ice three, one node. But let's see if we got any alarms, no basic configuration, uh, backup scheduled. So I'm assuming there's gonna be a menu over here. Bam, there's a part of the menu. And then we've got our administration, our classic style menu from there. Looks pretty nice though. I like it. So, and if you click back, I'm sure we go back to the dashboard. I like it, I like it. So let's go to administration and check out our admin access. And since this is gonna be for a lab machine, let's go ahead and make sure, oh, account disables not enabled. What do you know? Uh, well, it wasn't on the old version too, but lock suspend settings. We don't want to lock out. Again, this is a lab. Uh, we're going to test it out. And for all of you guys running ICE 2 version, stable and good, I would definitely set this up in the lab first before you push it out to production. It looks cool. It probably is awesome sauce, but we need to do a lot of testing. We're going to be doing a lot of that during this class and um, going to be having some fun for sure. Now, I am noticing though the menus are changing a little bit. Okay, so now this is a single node deployment right now and we're gonna go ahead and get a couple things set up so we can try out this new interface, but I am liking it for sure. So we'll save that for in a moment. Just wanted to give you a sneak preview of ICE 3.0, getting it installed. 
Um, and we'll go ahead and do a couple scenarios with the next video. It's gonna be fun. <laughs>